Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Joe and this is the first cryptocurrency related video that I will be putting up on this channel. It's one in a series that I plan on making about how to make a Bitcoin mine. Now I noticed on YouTube that there wasn't actually that many videos, if any, of how to make a Bitcoin mine all the way through. So I thought I would give it a shot. All right, here we go. We're going to start planning this. Uh, this is going to be the entire first episode is planning, making sure that you have all the resources you need to even start this. Do you have money? So you need money up front. Obviously, you need to invest in this. You're going to be buying hardware. You're going to be paying for power bills. Now, you need to have a little bit of extra cash just to do this. Uh, for me, we're working with about 6,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, for you, you know, you might be working with less, but I'm sure you can make it work. Now, this one is crucial. Is power cheap in your area? Now, I have an example of one of our power bills right here, and uh, I just asked my parents for this. Uh, so we pay $0.0679 per kilowatt hour. Now, if that is any higher than $0.1 per kilowatt hour, you might be on the borderline of not profitable, and uh, this thing, this entire project might not even be worth it for you. All right, the next thing, you need a place to put this hardware. This hardware is loud, it has fans blowing 24 seven, and you're not gonna be able to sleep or get any rest anywhere near this stuff. So for me, we're putting it in our garage. Um, it's a separate garage, separated from the house. Uh, we're not gonna be able to hear this at all. Now, this would probably work if you put it in a closet, in a basement, um, far away from any bedrooms but any closer than that and you're going to be able to hear it buzzing forever. Last thing, is crypto legal in your area? Now there's some parts of the world where cryptocurrency uh, just is frowned upon, it's illegal, maybe you have some kind of government regulation that is stopping you from uh, operating with cryptocurrency and you might need to get a license or it might just be straight up banned in your area. So make sure that you're operating to the full extent of the law. All right, so you've decided that you want to continue with this Bitcoin mining project. Um, the first thing that you're want to that you're going to want to do is uh, go over to uh, Google, look out for uh, any Bitcoin mining hardware. The company that I recommend is Bitmain. Um, we got two of these Antminer L3 Pluses right here. Um, you're going to want to look for hardware that fits within your budget and your uh, and your price range, and uh, also that is profitable with your power requirements and in your area. So naturally, the next step is to check on websites like CryptoCompare.com to see if your Bitcoin mining hardware that you've selected will be profitable. Um, this is actually a calculation for our two Antminer L3 Pluses, uh, including our power cost right there, uh, 1,008 mega hashes a second and 1,900 watts of power. This is telling me that we will make $13.04 thousand dollars uh, per year. All right, so the next thing that you're going to want to think about is power. How are you going to deliver the power to the area of your house, shed, garage that you are going to install the Bitcoin miner hardware in? So you're going to want to think about amps, the kind of sockets that you'll have, the power supplies that you'll use to supply power to the Bitcoin miners. Um, here, for example, I have a, a quote from my electrician for the work that we had done. I dug a trench in our backyard that took a few days to dig. Um, and then he, for $1,050, installed a 50 amp wire going to the garage and also a new breaker box. Here's our old box versus our new box. Um, this is the power supply that I selected. Um, it's on eBay. It's by someone who makes custom power supplies for Bitcoin mining. And this one power supply will actually power both of our Antminer L3 Pluses for roughly uh, 321 Canadian dollars, which is a steal in uh, the power supply market. Now, in terms of sockets, um, what kind of amperage you'll need, I'll go over that in detail in a later episode when I'm uh, actually installing those sockets in my garage. So now with all this information, you can actually calculate your upfront costs for the project. So over here, I have a spreadsheet with all of our upfront costs, the ant miners, banking fees, I'll go over later in this video exactly what the issue was with that. Um, power supplies, our electrician cost, trench digging, I included that as um, a cost, time is money, um, and then some network switching and some network cabling. All told, uh, so far our estimation is 6,427 Canadian dollars upfront costs. Um, obviously adding more miners to the system will be a lot cheaper because we won't have that 
$1,050 electrician cost every time we add a miner. It'll just be for this first uh, operation and upgrade. All right, so you have everything planned out. You're ready to secure your hardware. Now, uh, Bitmain, the hardware sells out within 24 hours of it going on sale almost every time. Uh, it's in high demand because it's very highly profitable. Um, so what I suggest is emailing Bitmain. Um, if you email them and ask to be added to the notifications lists, uh, they will do that and then you will get a fresh email every time a new batch of hardware comes in and is ready to uh, purchase. And then I also suggest uh, liking them on Facebook and um, just keeping an eye on your Facebook feed because they post on there uh, a few hours before the hardware goes live that um, there's new hardware coming out. All right, so you got one of these notification emails and you're ready to buy. Now, uh, when you go over to the Bitmain page, you're gonna see a page like this and you're just gonna hit add to cart. You can change the quantity or you can change that within the cart. I can't show you right now, obviously, because they are sold out. Now, one thing to expect when you're ordering hardware is it does ship on a very delayed cycle. Now, it is currently September 13th and they're saying that these models are gonna ship the 11th to the 20th of November. So this is roughly a month and a half to wait for your actual hardware that you're gonna pay for. Now, obviously this pertains specifically to Bitmain, but once you add those items to your cart, you're gonna have the option of paying with Bitcoin, US dollar transfer, Litecoin, there are a few options. And also that depends on the batch. Some batches do not include US dollar wire transfer as a payment option. Now, when I ordered my mining hardware, I didn't have any cryptocurrency, so my only option was wire transfer. Now, this comes with some complications and it's also very expensive to send. So here's a example of the receipt that we received for uh, wire transferring the money. Um, you see it's 3606 US dollars for two and minor L3 pluses. The currency exchange rate, uh, the bank is a little bit steep on, so it's a few cents off per dollar. Um, so this came out to 4,600 Canadian. There's a $40 charge Canadian for sending the wire transfer and it totaled out to this amount to actually send to the beneficiary. Now this took me two days at the bank to actually sort out because the bank depends on you to have the correct information and if your wire transfer goes to the incorrect place, uh, it's just kind of in the air and they're not sure when you're gonna get your money back exactly. Now after spending two days at the bank and there's a whole bunch of confusion, uh, we ended up sending it. Uh, Bitmain contacted me, said that they received the money, but we are 40 US dollars short. Now, this is probably somewhere in the fees, the fine print that uh, my bank didn't tell me about and their bank ended up skimming $40 off of the money that they received. So we ended up having to send 0.145 Bitcoin to their account and this was a big mess to try and figure out as well. So if you're sending a wire transfer, just make sure all the settings are correct, make sure the address is correct, make sure um, just everything is completely solid before you send the wire transfer and then don't worry about it. It'll take one to two weeks for them to even let you know that they've received it. Now the last thing that I will tell you about is that I figured out a few days ago that there's going to be some import taxes on the equipment that we ordered. So I went to this website, I entered in all of our information. So let's say electronics, it's uh, computers, and it was about $4,700. Um, so then da -da -da, it's elsewhere, it's not in NAFTA, and we're going to end up paying about $238 in taxes when the machines arrive. So just keep that in mind when you're ordering. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. In the description, I'll have links to all the websites I used as well as the document I used in this video. If you like this video, check out the second episode where I spend over $1,000 upgrading the amperage to my garage. Thank you for watching. My name is Vinjo, and I'll see you in another video.